This video is sponsored by Altium. Many problems in image processing, computer graphics, and computer vision can be posed as translating an input image into a corresponding output image. Just as a concept may be expressed in either English or French, a scene may be rendered as an RGB image, a gradient field, an edge map, a semantic label map, etc. In analogy to automatic language translation, we define automatic image to image translation as the task of translating one possible representation of a scene into another given sufficient training data this video is sponsored by altium the industry standard and most professional pcb design software on the market i've used altium for designing printed circuit boards to build my own custom arduinos and high speed on edge computer vision projects when i tested other pcb cat softwares out there i found that nothing came close to the flexibility ease of use and power of altium designer i mean if you ever worked on pcb design for computer vision applications you know that transmitting video signals is a very delicate task with many high-speed signals that you have to consider in terms of electromagnetic noise and crosstalk. Altium helps you to easily manage and route high-speed signals with length tuning to ensure that you receive clear image quality on the other end. What's really great is that we have partnered up with Altium to bring you an exclusive discount for our Augmented Startups community. Sign up with the link down below to get 30% off monthly of the perpetual license of Altium Designer. You can also try out Altium Designer for free for the first 15 days. Just click the link down below to get started. The community has already taken significant steps in this direction with convolutional neural nets, CNNs becoming the common workhorse behind a wide variety of image prediction problems. CNNs learn to minimize a loss function, an objective that scores the quality of the results, and although the learning process is automatic, a lot of manual effort still goes into the designing effective losses. In other words, we still have to tell the CNN what we wish to minimize but just like king midas we must be careful what we wish for if we take a naive approach and ask the cnn to minimize the euclidean distance between the predicted and the ground truth pixels it will lead to produce blurry results so this is because euclidean distance is minimized by averaging all the plausible outputs which causes blurring so coming up with the loss function that force the cnn to do what we really want for example output sharp realistic images is an open problem and generally requires expert knowledge. So it would be highly desirable if you could instead specify only a high level goal like make the output indistinguishable from the reality and then automatically learn a loss function appropriate for satisfying this goal. So fortunately this is exactly what is done by the recently proposed generative adversarial networks. So GANs learn a loss that tries to classify if the output image is real or fake while simultaneously training a generative model to minimize this loss. Blurry images will not be tolerated since they look obviously fake. Because GANs learns a loss that adapts to the data, they can be applied to a multitude of tasks that traditionally would require very different kind of loss functions. So the images shown in this slide are the GANs generated images in the conditional setting. Just as the GANs learn a generative model of the data, conditional GANs, C GANs, learn a conditional generative model. So this makes C GANs suitable for image to image translation tasks. So by conditioning on an output image and generate a corresponding output image. Generating photorealistic images from text is an important problem and has tremendous applications including photo editing, computer aided design, etc. So recently, generative adversarial networks have shown promising results in synthesizing real world images. So conditioned on given text descriptions, conditional GANs are able to generate images that are highly related to the text meanings. So in analogy to human painter's draw, we can decompose the problem of text to photorealistic image synthesis into two more tractable sub problems with stacked generative adversarial networks that is stack GAN. So low resolution images are first generated by stage 1 GAN. On the top of the stage 1 GAN, we can stack stage 2 GANs to generate realistic high resolution images conditioned on stage 1 results. And the text descriptions. So by conditioning on the stage 1 results and the text again, 
Stage 2 GAN learns to capture the tax information that is omitted by stage 1 GAN and draws more details for the object. So the support of the model distribution generated from a roughly aligned low resolution image has better probability of inter, uh, intersecting with the support of high image distribution. So this is the underlying reason why stage 2 GAN is able to generate better high resolution images. Photorealistic image rendering using standard graphics techniques is involved since geometry materials and light transport must be simulated explicitly. Although existing graphics algorithms excel at the task, building and editing virtual environment is expensive and time consuming. So this is because we have to model every aspect of the world explicitly. So if we were able to render photorealistic images using a model learned from data, we could turn the process of graphics rendering into a model learning and inference problem. Then we could simplify the process of creating new virtual worlds by training models on new data sets. So we could even make it easier to customize environments by allowing users to simply specify overall semantic structure rather than modeling geometry, materials, or lighting. So in this image, it is shown as a generation of photos from the images. So these are example of some semantic image and GAN generated cityscape photograph. So in this work, it was discussed a new approach that produces high resolution images from semantic label maps. So this method has a wide range of application. For example, we can use it to create synthetic training data for training visual recognition algorithms. Since it is much easier to create semantic labels for desired scenarios than to generate training images. So using semantic segmentation methods, we can transform images into a semantic label domain. Added the objects in the label domain and then transform them back to the image domain. So this method also allows and give us new tools for higher level image editing for example, adding objects to images or changing the appearance of existing objects. So this is how we can use GANs uh, in image to image translation, in text to image translation, and in image to photo translation.